While FlexFox is a one-dimensional model, it is possible to cause our flex items to wrap onto multiple lines. The flex wrap property defines whether the flex items are forced onto a single line or can be flowed into multiple lines. If set to multiple lines, it also defines the cross axes, which determines the direction that new lines are stacked in. It's worth noting that you need to remember the cross axes is the axis that's perpendicular to the main axes. Its direction is dependent on the main axis direction. The flex wrap property accepts three different values. No wrap, which is the default. This causes elements to appear on a single line and may cause the container to overflow. Next we have wrap, which allows items to appear on multiple lines. As I mentioned, the direction is defined by the flex direction. And then we have wrap reverse. This also allows items to appear on multiple lines, but opposite to the direction defined by the flex direction. Let's take a look at what this looks like in our actual web page. Here's the file that we'll start working with. As you can see, I have a container. It has five divs with the item class as well as their own unique classes. If we look into the style file, you can see that I have some basic styles specified on my elements. I currently have display flex on the container, which is why these items are stacking side by side. Now it is worth noting that if I go ahead and add a width property to my container, the items, if they cannot fit within the specified value of the container, they will actually spill out of the container. And again, this is the default property because flex wrap by default is set to no wrap. Let me show you what happens if we increase the content that appears in one of our items. If we save now and we refresh in the browser, you'll see that the flex items are still going to take up what space they possibly can and they'll try to fit within the container, but by default, because we have the flex wrap implicitly set to no wrap, the items may spill out of the containing element. I have some additional divs that I've commented out. I'm going to uncomment these. They're essentially the same exact thing, except that we have our own unique classes on these items. I'll save the HTML and let's jump over to our CSS. What I'll do here is I'm going to define a class for container2 and for this one, we're going to specify that our flex wrap is set to wrap. For C3, I'm going to set the flex wrap to wrap reverse. If we save now and we refresh, you can see the difference in the containing elements. In the second container, which still has a width specified of 400 pixels, the first item is taking up all of the available space. And because we've set the flex wrap to wrap, the additional items are gonna move down to the subsequent rows and take up as much space as they can, and they may wrap to another row if they need to. If we compare the second container to the third one, you can see it has very similar behavior, except that we've reversed the order of the items. So the first item is going to appear at the bottom and then it will fill in with the additional items as necessary. Now let me go ahead and let me get rid of the width property. I'll also just go ahead and add the flex wrap of no wrap to the first item. This of course is not gonna change anything, but it will just make you aware that that is the default behavior. At this point, you'll see that the containing elements can be as wide as they possibly can based on the size of the browser window. When we have the container set to no wrap, the items are just going to fit in the available space. As I resize my browser window, you can see that the first item is going to scale based on the space that is available so that it can adjust and grow if necessary. On the wrap and the wrap reverse, the first item is gonna take up all of the available space that it can so that it can display its content. The rest of the items are going to wrap onto a secondary line. The rest of the items will wrap onto a secondary line since we have some sort of wrap declared. 
the rows that are created based on flex wrap or flex wrap reverse is going to be dependent on the content that exists within the item elements. If they have more content, we could potentially get more rows. So now you know what the flex wrap property will do. When it's set to wrap, the items wrap. When you set it to no wrap, which is the initial value, they will instead shrink to fit the container because they are using the initial flexbox values that allows items to shrink. Using no wrap also causes an overflow if the items are not able to shrink. Using no wrap can also cause an overflow if the items are not able to shrink or they cannot shrink small enough to fit. Needless to say, the flex wrap property allows you to create multiple rows and columns using Flexbox. So even though Flexbox is a one dimensional model, it is possible to cause our flex items to wrap onto multiple lines using FlexWrap.